And now to the Secretary General of NATO, Jens Stoltenberg. He was at NATO headquarters in Brussels when I spoke with him this afternoon. Mr. Stoltenberg, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, you've just completed a, a virtual summit with uh, members of NATO, their leaders. My question is, is there a consensus from NATO now on whether there's any way to stop the Russians from overtaking uh, Ukraine, overtaking its capital, Kyiv, uh, and overtaking the government? All NATO allies express their strong support to, to uh, Ukraine, and they call on Russia to cease uh, the attacks uh, on an independent sovereign uh, nation, uh, Ukraine. Um, what NATO does is that uh, we impose severe costs on Russia, uh, the economic sanctions, and the U.S. is uh, is is is, is uh, leading by 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 imposing severe sanctions on uh, on Ukraine. And then we also, uh, NATO allies, provide, uh, continues to provide uh, support to Ukraine, uh, military, uh, civilian, financial support to help them in an extremely dangerous and difficult situation. But does that mean there's no way to stop the Russians from doing what they say they're going to do? We provide them support uh, because Ukraine is a highly valued uh, partner. We have worked with them for many, many years. And the Ukrainian army is much better trained, much better equipped, much much bigger now than in 2014, not least because of the significant support from the United States and all the NATO allies. But we have made it clear uh, that we are not going to send in NATO troops uh, to fight uh, on the ground. Is there anything more that NATO and its members can do to help uh, the Ukrainian people? Uh, we, we, know NATO, we know Ukraine is not a member, but uh, you yourself have said uh, the whole European security order uh, is threatened. NATO allies provide support and continue to support Ukraine in many different ways. And uh, NATO allies, the United States uh, and other allies, United, uh, and also the European Union, have just announced unprecedented economic sanctions to make sure that there are real costs to be paid by Russia for this reckless behavior. But I think if NATO went into Ukraine, we would have risked something which is even worse than what we see today. And that is a uh, a uh, big uh, conflict involving many countries in Europe. And you announced today the NATO response force, at least part of it, is being deployed. But in the, in the near term, um, is that going to be enough to make a difference? That makes a huge difference uh, because uh, we are sending a very clear message to uh, Russia that uh, an attack on one ally will trigger a response from the whole alliance. And to demonstrate the credibility of that, uh, we are increasing the presence of NATO forces in the eastern part of the alliance, uh, on land, at sea and in the air. How concerned are you, Mr. Stoltenberg, though, that once, if Russia is able to take hold in Ukraine, that the next stop may be Poland, may be the Baltics, uh, that this is what Russia has in mind? What happens then? If, if there is any attack on any NATO allied country, like Poland or the Baltic countries, then the whole alliance will be there. Uh, that's the purpose of NATO. Uh, one for all, all for one. And, uh, and in a way, to, to make sure that there is no room for miscalculation in Kremlin or Moscow about that, we have increased the presence of NATO troops in the Eastern Party Line. So NATO will be there from day one with significant uh, uh, capabilities. Uh, but what has happened in Ukraine has already created a new normal for European security. Uh, this is changing the way we can think about engaging with Russia. Uh, and, uh, and it will have some long-term consequences, both when it comes to our deterrence posture, uh, the need for forces, troops uh, uh, throughout uh, the alliance, but also how to engage with Russia in the future, because Russia has proven that they are willing to use force uh, to get their will, and uh, that is undermining core uh, principles for European security, which has been of great importance for many decades. If NATO is not able to stop Russia in Ukraine, is it definitely going to be able to stop Russia if it were to move on another NATO country, on a NATO country? Absolutely. Also, make no mistake, NATO is the strongest military alliance in history, and uh, we will defend every ally against any threat, and we will defend every inch of NATO territory. But we are not deploying NATO troops to Ukraine. I understand the frustration. I understand uh, the, the, the suffering they are, they are seeing um, in Ukraine. 
Uh, but but I think we need to understand also that NATO has some core responsibilities. We're living up to them. And then NATO allies are actually those countries in the world that has helped uh, Ukraine the most. You have stressed, Mr. Stoltenberg, the unity of NATO members of Europe. And yet when we look at economic sanctions right now, uh, several European countries are opposed, at least according to President Biden, uh, opposed to moving ahead with uh, putting restrictions on Russia's access to the SWIFT system, the, the uh, global banking system. Is that a mistake on the part of uh, Europe, Europe right now and the United States that they're not able to move together? Uh, to impose this sanction on Russia. But European allies, the European Union uh, and, uh, uh, and uh, other NATO allies, as the United States, Canada, Norway, outside the European Union, they have been very closely coordinated. They are uh, now imposing unprecedented sanctions on uh, Russia, including their banking sector, which has uh, very much the same consequences, or it has yeah, hard consequences for the way they can conduct, for instance, payments or finance uh, Russian debt, uh, which has severe consequences for the whole economy. We've seen that demonstrated in the Russian stock market and the, and the value of the Russian ruble today. Um, so this, is, this has severe consequences for the for Russian, for Russian economy. Uh, uh, it will have long-term consequences, and it will take some time before we see the full consequences. But what is clear is that R Russia has to pay a high price when they violate international law and invade another country. There have been unconfirmed reports that President Zelensky uh, may be prepared to talk to President Putin uh, about uh, having an, uh, a non-aligned relationship. In other words, saying that, that Ukraine would never, pledging never to join NATO. Um, again, they're unconfirmed, but do you have a position on whether that's a good idea? My main position is that it is for Ukraine to decide its own future, uh, to choose its own path, and we should respect that decision. Uh, and that's the case for all countries, that they, they should decide themselves whether they want to belong to uh, an alliance as NATO or not belong to. What we see now is that we have a full-fledged invasion. We have uh, people killed. Uh, we have uh, the use of the Russian armed forces to try to uh, uh, force their will on Ukraine. And that's the opposite of respecting the free, independent choice of a democratic country, Ukraine. Last question, Mr. Stoltenberg. Uh, do you have a message today for the people of Ukraine and for President uh, Putin? To President Putin, the, the message is that uh, Russia should cease uh, its uh, aggression against uh, Ukraine immediately and withdraw all its forces and respect uh, Ukraine as an independent sovereign nation. Uh, to the people of Ukraine, uh, my message is that we stand in solidarity with them. We continue to provide support. And I would like to also pay my respect to the people of Ukraine and uh, the uh, courage of the Ukrainian armed forces. NATO's Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg, thank you very much for talking with us. We appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me.